Hi, I am uh, doing this video uh, for being single and uh, celibate in today's society. And uh, September 13, 2011. I am doing this video um, about celibacy uh, in my experiences uh, with it over the past 10 years. Uh, this is Star Wars of Year 11 for me. Um, it has been a piece that I have never known, it, meaning that it has uh, kept me safe uh, from a lot of confusion and the things that uh, people are going through now in relations to um, in, in relationships. You know, that time is now. Yeah, it's not all fun and fun, you know. Um, there's a lot of other things that go along with it. It has kept me safe from all the all the worries and the concerns and it's given me a freedom. Meaning that I'm not bound by it. I'm not driven by sex. And a lot you know, and that's how it is today in society. In today's society. It is it's what it is. And um just as in, I am a single parent. You know, I've never been married. I have never lived with a man. Um, my son is grown. He's in his early 20s. And I'm raised by myself. Um, so I don't know anything about what happened to with a man. I have no idea what happened. Um, that total part of my life is all like that. I don't know. Um, and by choice, it's not like I couldn't have uh, done that. I just decided not to because I've had my son all of my adult life. My choice is, um, you know, when he was younger, um, I'll start with that. When he was younger, um, just being a single parent, I thought about finding someone for him, you know, when they always need a role model. And, uh, but just so many things happen to children in trying to, Choose man, you, if you don't make the right choice, your children suffer emotionally, physically, or sexually, or all of the above, unfortunately, and it happens every day. And I just was not willing to take that choice, that chance with him. So I made the choice um, not to do it. So I just raised him alone, and as a father, and um, you know, either we lived with family or we lived alone. And uh, I don't regret um, that decision. Um, I, I really don't. I went with what I knew to do best. I was all about protecting him and keeping him safe because he is the next. It don't have to be him. And when you choose somebody uh, in a relationship and uh, you choose to live with them, with them, a lot of people do. And uh, if you break up with that person, then usually it's a, it's a Complete break meaning that more often than not, that man is no longer going to be a part of that child or those children's life. And um, they have a void too in their life. And they're going through changes and don't even really know why. What happened to this person? Where did they And um, And then, you know, for a lot of women, you know, they're still dating and whatnot, and it's on to the next guy, you know, in two or three months or a year or whatever time that is. And so, you know, and then after a while, over 20 year period of, of dating and, you know, being with this guy, that guy, you know, there are several people that you have introduced into your children's life. I didn't want to do that. And when I was dating, um, the man that I met at that time, um, usually had my own house. And I felt that I could just see them there. So we were spending time together and I was date night or whatever it was. But I would just want to see that man that I was seeing at that particular time and his house or wherever it was and we'd go out or whatever. But it's, what I'm saying is that it was separate from my son. Um, once, um, you know, I introduced him to, he might meet the man I'm dating, but that's it. And I say hi to them, and that's pretty much it. I just wasn't willing to do that because uh, if you do it and um, it doesn't turn into um, 
anything to mention that get married. It doesn't turn out to be a relationship that lasts for 15 years or something like that. More often than not, most of the relationships do not end up being anything that long term. So, um, it's just, it just, I felt that this is not necessary. So I just felt that in a thorough package deal, and if it wasn't serious, then it was no need for my son to spend time with that man. Um, so, you know, it's just, um, I just, I just felt that way. And that's just, that's just the decisions that I made for my life and my country. And I don't regret it. And, um, you know, as, as time goes on, it's, it's difficult. You, how do you, I didn't really know how to live with a man and have a teenage son in my house and then having a man stay over. I didn't, I didn't know how to do that. I wasn't comfortable with that. And I'm pretty liberal. I, I am. You know, people know me, I am. Um, but I just, I wasn't comfortable. I'm old fashioned about some stuff. And, um, I just really wasn't okay with that. So I just, I just didn't do it. I just didn't do it. So, that's, that's how I raised him. I just, I just, I don't know if kids have real good memories of, you know, if they have a single mother or whatnot, and they have all these different, um, men in and out of their lives. You know, I just, I don't, I don't know how that, I, I just really wasn't willing to do this. I just didn't. And, um, but even moving on, it's just really difficult. My son became older, um, and I was ending, uh, school. Um, I was in school and it was still, it was a commitment for me and I was in a relationship and, uh, it was more often than on and, um, I just decided that when it was ending, I was just going to go ahead and let it in, um, because it wasn't what I needed. He was not willing to commit. He was closer to graduating and, um, I just let go of that, um, because my son was reaching, he was a teenager at this time, and um, one of the junior high school boys, and I just, um, it was just difficult just trying to be a single parent and raise him without the extra emotional baggage of a relationship that was not what I needed, it was extra stress, so I just let it go, and I decided to focus on just raising him, and um, that's what I did. And I got myself out of school, and um, and then when I got out of school, I decided that you're okay. I'm going to get him out of high school. You know, I um, try to raise young um, African American men in a large city um, as a single parent. Is that takes some work, and um, you know, my son got to a point where he was in a transition school for grades, not for behavior. But we had to pay for these classes. And some of the kids were there for behavior. And our grades, you know, the combination of both. And um, he was there trying to finish, get his diploma, and taking his classes and going every day. And um, some of the students there were doing the wrong things. They were from the class talking about that. And, you know, um, they were on the wrong path completely. And I told my son, it's, you know, all yelling and screaming and maybe first words just to, because you get upset and I had to feel this and like listen, don't get caught up in that, um, stay on your path, those guys don't pay attention to them if they try to provoke you, you have to swallow your pride and you have to walk away because you have your whole life ahead of you and they're on the wrong path and they're going to end up somewhere you don't want to, you know, they can end up in jail or they can end up there, you don't end up either, either place, so let them go ahead on about their business, and you go on the still right path, and luckily, you know, listen, I don't know what happened to those students that he was talking to me about, I, I hope that they turned their life around, I don't, I don't know, but my son finished, and he got his diploma, and, um, but it takes a lot of work, you know, because their kids, when you, when they're young men or teenagers, they go out here in this world, and they, and these other people, if they're trying to make anything of themselves, other people who are on around the house try to make it difficult for them. Um, unfortunately, that's, that's the way it is. It's just so sad on so many levels. 
But um, I got him through that. I got him. Got his diploma. Graduated. And I didn't realize how much um, stress it was raising him by myself until that day he graduated. I just, I cried. I really, really did. It's, it's, it takes a lot. It takes a lot. And by that time, I was four years into celibacy, and um, I um, he's been out for several years now out of school, and uh, he has a girlfriend, and they have a baby, and um, I decided to continue to be celibate. You know, I see no reason not to. He's brought me a lot of peace, and. Um, it just, it really, really has, and I um, don't see a reason to change that this time. You know, this is the fall of 2000, 2011, and I don't, I'm not trying to date anybody this year. Maybe next year, I'll think about it. Maybe. I'm on nobody's time, they will my own. I'm in no great hurry, and I don't have to be. I know what it is, and I know what it is. And what is not for me is anything that I take lightly is not casual for me. I think that in your 20s, it is a growing experience. You are, you have to discover, it's a period of discovery. And it was for me also, like it was for a lot of people, a lot of women. And um, what I discovered is what not to do. <laughs> okay, that's what I discovered. That was my life. That's what I discovered what not to do. And, um, I don't, I don't do, maybe some people do casual sex, well, I do, I do, I do not I get attached, I'm one of those women, I have to have an established relationship, I just can't go over here, and just because things sound good, and, you know, the feeling, it feels right, and you just go ahead and act on it, I'm just, no, that does not work for me, it's just, Absolutely. It just does not work for me in my life. And I know my life. So it just it does not work for me. So um this is this is no going on. But just um just looking at dating today, um in society, even over the internet and in T V, you know, you got people that are over here, they're over there, and they're right down the middle, meaning that they are you know, by the day over here, you know, dating the female this week, and over here, the dating the man this week, and um, that's fine. I'm not um, saying anything about anybody's choice about who they date or who they put. That's, that's fine with me. But it's just that people don't always tell what they do, they don't always divulge all the information. And that therein lies the problem. And, you know, unfortunately for a lot of women, what happens is with dating, is that they find stuff out later in the relationship after they have gone on for a while, or after they have married the man, and or when somebody gets sick, he gets sick or she gets sick or both. That is so alarming to me. When I hear stories like that, I just stop reading. I really do, because that's just too much for me. I, you know, over the years, I I remember telling somebody that. Um, I was not one of the things I was not willing to do was uh, trust somebody with my life at this time. And that was several years ago, and I told her that we're in the same occupation, you know, in occupations that um, you understand all that things that go along with health and all stuff. And uh, even with that, she was saying, you know, you, you know, you're not. She didn't really understand what I was saying, and I'm like, you know, because in a relationship, this is what my thought is in a relationship. You are not, uh, most people do not use, um, they might use contraceptives, but they usually don't use condoms and they usually don't use dinner dance and stuff like that. You know, to my knowledge, they usually don't. That's how babies get born, you know. So, um, it, which is fine. I'm not knocking that. I'm just saying that they don't. So, how can, how can you keep yourself safe? My thing is about that. If you know that you're monogamous, then I'm a monogamous person. And, um, I believe in being faithful to that man that I am I am with. I just do. It might be old fashioned, but I just I just do. And um if he messes up, then what does that mean for me? Here I am at home 
thinking that everything is everything and you know I can you know where would that leave me? I'd be caught up too. Meaning that I could contract whatever it is and you get out here and contract it. So when I hear of people, a lot of times you hear of high profile people with, about infidelity and politicians and whatnot. When I hear that and a baby is produced, that's a marvel to me. Because not only did he get out there, it doesn't mean that he cheated. It means that he went out there and he cheated. A baby is produced, and babies are beautiful, they're not responsible for the decisions of adults. What I'm saying is that if a baby is produced, that means that he was out there messing around, and he wasn't wearing a condom. So that also means that he could have contracted something. That one that he was sleeping with has probably slept with other men. So she could have potentially have had something, you know. And not only did he put his life at rest, he put his wife. Or if he wasn't married, his living girlfriend or his girlfriend at rest. That's a problem for me. So, uh, and that's so alarming. And it happens to people, unfortunately, every day. And they have to, they have to deal with it. I'm not ready for that. I am, this is just a bit too much for me. I am not ready for worrying like that. So, I, you know, last time I even dated was probably about five years ago and um, and I've read books about celibacy and some of them say you don't do anything and some of them say you can you know mess around like you're a teenager I think that the messing around thing is um, like when I was quiet if you are uh, practicing celibacy like me and you are going on a date with a man and you then are alone with him like people do and you're attracted to him. I think that that can turn out to be a really not so good situation with some regrets later. So I think that for me, tested, tried, and true. I think that for me, I just believe, and you know, I'm going to go out and we're going out publicly. There is no um, alone time. I don't want to put myself in that type of situation. <laughs> So, um, because I think that if you play with fire, you will get burned. Meaning that in close quarters with somebody that you are really attracted to, um, physically the chemistry is good, and you are behind closed doors, things can happen. And uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, but if you're not really, really ready for that, then you, know, you really don't want to put yourself in that type of situation. So it's just best not to not to do that. You can go out and train a company every man without doing all that. So um, for me, that's that's one of the things that works. And I have allergies. Um, in September, so it's my time up. And just thinking about that, um, so that that's for me. That's what works for me. So no close quarters, no behind closed doors, no public <laughs> public dinners and stuff like that. Um, that's 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 more for me. Um. But it's just uh, it's just so much to um, consider now, you know, as a single man, just a single woman, just dating a man, um, even with um, with just kissing and going out on a date, and uh, just kissing somebody is an issue for me because if they are you going out on a date, for instance, and um, it's seven o'clock in the evening or whatever, if he is just simply um, a single man, you know, and actively dating. You know, other women, which is fine. It's just that along with the actively dating part, here today, most people don't practice celibacy. So they're actively dating, means they're actively dating, and it also includes sex with those people that they're actively dating. And um, then they come out on a date with you. And sex includes nowadays. All you know aspects of sex, including oral sex, and this is just real. Um, in the adult world, it just it does. And um, then they come out on a date with you. You know, they dated somebody yesterday. Maybe they stayed over and went home this morning. And then you know they're free today. There's no commitments or whatever. And then they're out on a date with you later on that Friday evening or that you know the Saturday evening or whatever. And things go well, he likes you, you like him, and some people decide to kiss him the first day. But, you know, 
even with Jennifer, you know, the, you know, this morning, you know, and they had a hot and heavy night, you know, and uh, everything that she is is now passed on to you in that kiss. That is food for thought, you know, and if he lied and he's married and he was with his wife, everything that his wife is is now passed on to you in that kiss. If he is a man that dates other men as well as women, everything that his male friend is is now passed on to you in that kiss. And this is reality today. This is this is just really how it is. And this is how I I this is what I think about when I think about kissing a man today. I think about that. And it's well for women. I'm not male bashing at all because women too, you know, everything that she is is now passed on in that kiss to that person that that woman is dating. So I think about that because I'm not dating anybody. I haven't dated anybody in five or six years. No swapping spit for me. I don't know when, and when I think about stuff like that, I don't even know when I'll be dating. And if I do date, well, the kiss is going to be a part of it. Because, you know, in order to enjoy somebody's company, I don't know, you know, maybe, you know, you don't really have to swap spit. Or, you know, because, you know, all that stuff is fun and feels good, and all that stuff you are attracted to a man. I am not saying anything about that. I understand the reality of it. And there is a reality of it. It's just that people... They want to see that. They don't want to know it. They don't want to experience it. They don't want to think about it. They don't want to think about the bad stuff. They don't want to think about everything that he wants to do with feel stuff. You know, so they want to ignore all of the other stuff. But I think about the other stuff. I do. And uh, just because you don't think about it, you try to ignore it and think that, you know, it's going to go away. It does not. Those problems still arise. And you, you have to be aware of that. Music. This is where we are. We in a society that promotes sex up there with food, water, and air. You must be having sex. You must be. When I look at TV, what I see is uh, the quality of sex and blah, blah, blah. How much sex are you having? You must be doing this. If you're able to walk or crawl, you must be partaking in this activity. Because you want orange, or orange you have sex. I have uh, getting to work in this workplace situation. And these um, people who uh, found out that I was celibate, not that it's anything to hide, it's not anything that I'm ashamed of. This is by choice, strictly. You know, and I can change it at any given time. I don't have to be, I choose to be. There is a difference, and there is power in that choice. Uh, nobody is making me, I'm not bound by religion, I'm not taking any vows. This is just for me. This is my life, just like what I wear or how I decide to wear my hair. You know, what color I decide to, whether I've got on jeans today or a skirt or whether I decide to dye my hair, cut it, or, or wear dreads or, or whatever. It is simply a choice. And a lot of people don't understand it. They can't fathom the idea that you would be able body. You're, you know, you have a, as a female, you have a decent shape, you're single, and you don't have any children, you know, dependent, you know, just they're looking for reasons to let you to have everything going for yourself and you choose not to have sex. People today do not understand that. I mean, that's because of the way that they look at it. Excuse me. That's because of the way that they look at it. They they think that, oh my God, you know, you just have to have it. And I'm just, I just don't believe that. You know, food is good. I go out to dinner. Food is good. You know, the margaritas or the daiquiris are still good. And water is still good. And the air is still good. And the birds still sing. The sun is still shining. Everything is right with the world from where I sit. So I don't feel like I'm missing anything. It is, you know, I remember several years ago I was at work and this, this another coworker was asking me, well, you never, you never, you never live with nobody, and what's wrong with you? And I said, there's nothing wrong with me. You know, absolutely nothing. Everything is right. I can bake, sew, and cook, and all that stuff is is nothing right. 
you know, I know how to make an omelet for a man. It's just that I don't think that I have to be um, joined to a man in order to, in order to be, in order to to validate me as a woman. I don't think that. You know, I don't, I don't think that I have to be. And a lot of women I encounter, um, because of their their comments and things like that, lets me know exactly they have a a kind of a codependent way of looking at life as a woman, and they don't even understand that they have it. They, you know, if you're a single woman and you are trying to buy a house or whatever it is you're trying to do. They start thinking, they start seeing things like, oh, she got to have a man to help her. Why she don't want no man to help her?